I want you to go through a good process of from what you can visualize, identify the problem, and we will find the process so that you can use whatever that is taught in H2 may have to calculate this length faster. It is this scenario. I'm going to just redraw it again. Vector A, vector B. And we are supposed to calculate for this distance here. And we know we have just done it. It is exactly the same. How can I do the same thing faster? And I'm telling you, identify this triangle. And that triangle is not just a right angle triangle. That triangle, we're going to call that the magic triangle. And we're going to learn how to identify this magic triangle. Because this magic triangle is going to be calculating for all the length question that is in you know, our vectors all. That means it is not just for today. Well, the way that we're going to be calculating length today is going to help you to calculate length all the way until the very last length they're going to calculate in your entire vectors. And for those of you who didn't know, you know unless you have already studied planes, if you are still at lines, there's still a plane. After a plane, you're still going to be seeing how points, lines, planes are going to be merged together to test further on. And what we're going to do today, this magic triangle, is going to last you all the way until the very last second when you're doing vectors. And how does this magic triangle work? For a magic triangle to work, I need to find three things. Number one is I need to find a right angle, number one. Sorry, number one is I need to find a right angle triangle, number one. Number two is I want to make sure that the hypotenuse is can be calculated. Usually it can be. Not usually, actually almost all the time it can be. But you just need to find a way to calculate the hypotenuse. So the second one is I need to make sure that the hypotenuse is, a, is something that is known to me. Since for the scenario that is given, I'm given vector A and vector B. So do I know the hypotenuse for this scenario? Yes, because the hypotenuse is modulus of A. So this is the second thing. The third thing, it, this plus this is still secondary school. Because with this right angle and with the hypotenuse, it seems like I'm, I'm trying to work for a Tuakaso or a, either a Tuakaso or a Pythagoras theorem. It seems like that. But the third one is the one that is crucial. Because just now as we are trying to do this question, right, we see a mixture between secondary school and H2 math. The third one is special because the third thing is actually an angle that will trigger for me the, the tokaso. And this angle, I ha actually have options. This or this. I have two options. I don't want you to see some diagram as a default, okay? Because I can always change this diagram so the angle appears elsewhere. But if it is a general triangle, do you realize that if I were to just do a simple secondary school tokaso, I won't mind whether the angle is this that is given to me or this that is given to me. Either of the angle can help me to do a talk. So, but it cannot help me to do this question. Why? Because I know in my H2 math vectors, I am learning two new things, the dot product and the cross product. And the dot and cross product involve an angle. And the angle is special. The angle must be the angle that is between two vectors. That means if I plan, and you should be doing that later on, if you plan to use the dot and cross product, then you must involve the angle that is between two vectors. That is why the third thing, the moment when you find it, it becomes the magic triangle that you are looking for. Although I can assign angle here or here, but I am going to assign angle here. This is the number three. Why here? Because this is the angle that is given, this is the angle that is, that is between the two given vectors, A and B. One, two, three. The moment when I can find these three things, what I want you to do is, you don't use the formula, okay? What I want you to do is, you bring in the dot product. You bring the dot product because you know that what you're supposed to find here, according to my Tokaso, is modulus of A cosine theta. You see a cosine theta, you want to use a dot product because dot product has a cosine theta. So it will be A dot B. This is equal to modulus of A, modulus of B cosine theta. And the length of projection that you are trying to look at is modulus of A cosine theta. In vectors, in general, since theta can be either in the first quadrant or the second quadrant, so you'll be expecting cosine theta to be either positive or negative. And I don't want that because I'm working on the length. I'm going to add an overall modulus. And this can be calculated by making modulus of A cosine theta the subject, 
Then I can move this B over to the left hand side. So I will have this as a modulus of A dot B divided by modulus of B. Then I sub the numbers in like what I just done, what I've just done, and I'll be able to calculate this length. Do you understand the process? Mugu, do you understand the process? I'm talking about the process, not the formula. Do you understand the process, Mugu? Any question? Ken, Mugu? Yeah. Jerome, okay, the process. What if the question asks you for this? What do you think is the shortest possible distance from here to here? What if it is this? I will do the same thing. I will find the magic triangle. Every length question, just find the magic triangle first. There are of course a lot of different ways. We can even do it like what we did just now, but it is not fast enough. Since we have done it once, we know it is going to be repeated. We're going to spend some time to go and understand the process. We work out a good strategy first. I'm going to make sure that I execute this, execute this strategy as much as I can. So, I want to find this, and using my tokaso, I know sine theta can do that, y over r. This tells me that y is equal to r sine theta. This y here is r sine theta. This x here is r cosine theta. Which means that what I'm trying to work out, if it were to be this length, is modulus of a sine theta. Okay, I mean this is just geometry. And you know why I use sine theta? I mean, you, you know what is the good thing about sine theta? Because we have the cross product, cross product. Let's go for it. Cross product, here. Cross product. And should I use this formula? No, no, no. I'm not going to use that first formula. You know, I'm not going to use this formula that is in the yellow color box. Because this formula has vector, 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 you know. And, and I cannot do division that is like this. That's why which is that formula that is useful, number one. Like what I was telling you just now, if you plan to use the cross product formula, the equation, by default, you should use the you should use this instead of this. We just this is very very critical because this lay the very foundational work of how cross product is being defined. But the one that is truly applicable and realistic to use is actually this. This is the one that is practical. So I'm going to go for property number one, which is modulus of a cross b. This is modulus of a, modulus of b, sine theta. And I'm supposed to find this length. And this length, according to what I can visualize here, is modulus of A sine theta, which is going to be modulus of A sine theta, which means that I can simply divide this across to the other side because they are just numbers. I've already prepared for it. This is equal to modulus of A cross B divided by modulus of B. Then you sub the numbers in. When you go through this full process, C first, identify the thing, then come up with a strategy to solve it, then you will get the full essence of vectors. If you just plan to use the formula, skipping the first few parts, it's not just you get part of vectors, you get almost none of vectors. Let's try to make use of this strategy, this magic triangle strategy, to complete this B, C, and D. Trust me, it is going to be very, very easy. It may seem to be slower because you cannot use the formula directly. You have to go through this whole process. But if you just keep going through this whole process, you'll get stronger, you'll get faster. And very soon, you're going to be ahead of your friends who just use the formula. The formula is just a one mess by itself. It doesn't explain anything. You cannot do vectors when you cannot explain anything. Let's try. B. B, we are supposed to find QS. Okay, and I'm not going to use the Pythagoras theorem, although the fastest way is to use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, but I'm going to try to use the same strategy, which is uh, I'm going to try to find this. And to find this, it is modulus of PQ sine theta. Right, just now we have, uh, sorry, I have, I have accidentally erased this. If I have R, if I have theta, then this is going to be r cosine theta. This is going to be r sine theta. And I have chosen theta to be this angle here. Why did I choose the angle to be this? Because I have pq, I have pr. 
That is why, although I can choose the angle here to be theta also in secondary school, but at H2 math, because I know I'm going to use cross product, which involves the angle that is between two vectors, so I'm assigning theta to this. Just now we have already found P, Q, and P, S. P, Q was 1 minus 1 minus 1. P, S. P, S. This is equal to, uh, sorry, P, oh, sorry, not P, S, P, R. P, R. P, R, this is equal to 6, 3 minus 6. So, sine theta cross product gives me a sine theta, especially when I have chosen the correct theta. So PQ cross PR, modulus of this. This is equal to modulus of PQ, modulus of PR, sine theta. And I'm supposed to find modulus of PQ, sine theta. And this is equal to modulus of PQ cross PR divided by modulus of PR and this will give me PS. Do I need to put an overall modulus? It depends. Uh. I mean, it is not very necessary. Why? Because uh, PQ is, is positive, sine theta is also positive. Why is sine theta positive? Because theta is in the first or the second quadrant. And sine of the angle that is in the first or second quadrant is positive. So this is going to be equal to modulus of PQ. 1 minus 1 minus 1 cross PR 6 3 minus 6 and this is going to be divided by modulus of 6 3 minus 6. If you have to work out the cross product in the numerator this is equal to 9 0 9 divided by the denominator it is going to be square root of 6 square plus 3 square plus 6 square if you have to evaluate this you are going to get a square root of 2.